One of Lightfall's most mysterious creatures, the Puka. Elsie Bray had one in Beyond Light, and today we learn the details. Where it was found, what it does, and who left it behind. We also get insight into the Europan Pyramid Ship, where Elsie finds a nightmare of Anna and the secret to acquiring stasis in her time loop of frustration. Welcome Guardians, let's dive right in. As the previous two videos, this information comes from the Lightfall Collector's Edition. Today we talk about Elsie and the mysteries she finds with the Puka. Previous videos discuss the Cabal Empire's history with Kallus and Keidel, and then Ikora's investigation into Osiris. Those links are down below. On board a ship, Toki the Ghost rummages through Elsie's supplies. Toki is a ghost that Elsie found on an abandoned station with the fish creature Puka. Now they are aboard her ship. Previously on the station, the Puka showed the Ghost Toki nanotech, which it then outfitted in its own shell, which looks like this. Nanotechnology that comes from Neomuna, of course. In current time, Elsie has removed it from the shell, so Toki was searching for more components in her supplies. Elsie prepared to double down, but her train of thought derailed as she looked up to see her surreal alien passenger slither its way into the compartment. Cutting through the air with a beta fish's grace, the alien examined Toki's scrap and parts with six glittering eyes. Elsie felt wonder and discomfort creep into her as she watched. The alien, the fish, for a lack of a better word, had lived alone in that abandoned Ishtar station beyond Uranus for who knows how long before Toki found it, and Elsie in time discovered Toki. Elsie assumed a human had brought the fish after all. The station had showed signs of habitation in the last decade or so by someone human, or at least close enough to it. The uncertainty aided her because she knew that everything about her future, her fate demanded understanding all possible influence of the coming conflict. She convinced herself that only victory could break her free of these hellish time loops, whether that meant the grand victory against the pyramid fleets or the personal victory of saving her sister, she wasn't sure. But uncertainty, that was the fly in her ointment, and she was certain of nothing when it came to Toki's strange friend. Leaning in close, Elsie reached toward the fish, and the creature dutifully slid into her palm. She turned the form over, then again, digital eyes scanning every detail of the silicate body. Below the head, she found a word etched in the same careful hand that had inscribed the destroyed weapon they'd found near the creature's nest. Puka? Like the fairy. Is that your name or species? I think it's a lovely name, Toki offered. Puka only rubbed its face into Elsie's waiting hand, demanding attention. You are a pet. Elsie gave the shiny carapace a scratch, triggering a wave of purrs. Puka's six eyes focused independently up at her and glittered. Someone taught you those tricks and then left you. Puka then replays a memory for Elsie. Isolation. Do not mourn your abandonment, Elizabeth. They are small minds. I know grandfather's words make sense, but that doesn't sate the hollowness gnawing inside my chest. I set the stylus down, plant my hands against my desk, and take a long, ragged breath of recycled air to silence the scream I need to unleash. The feeling passes. I retrieve the tool and return to business as usual in the lonely European lab. I am in control, even though I know that changes nothing. So they're sitting there on this ship, Elsie is petting Puka, she thinks it's some sort of fish thing, and then it plays this memory for her back on Europa with Clovis Bray. Previous lore told us that this thing was found out somewhere near Pluto. But now we know it was an abandoned Ishtar space station near Uranus. And what do we know from the Echo Project? That Braytek and Ishtar worked together to create the Echo Project, where they wanted to send humans to the Andromeda Galaxy. AI Soteria launched the project when the collapse began, and they crash landed on Neptune. So someone, a Cloud Strider, had this Puka in their possession and ventured to this Ishtar space station for some reason. Why did they reveal themselves, and what were they searching for? Back to the ship, Elsie realizes what this puka is. You're shaping whatever you feel, she mused, and her mind drifted back to the warm beaches with Willa and Alton, their tiny footsteps slowly filling the saline from their warm, wet sand. Nature abhors a vacuum, and my heart fills it up. That could be dangerous, she realized. Puka chittered happily as Elsie began stroking the silicate head. 
but you wouldn't be someone's pet if you were dangerous, would you? Elsie's mind wandered back to the lonely space station where she found the curious creature. Of the enormous handprint left behind the titanic rifle that Toki had scavenged to dress herself. So why does a person who needs a giant gun also need a little psychic fish that makes you feel memories? So again, more evidence on that station that this was a Cloud Strider, a giant human handprint. We know Cloud Striders are much bigger than humans. And like we have ghosts, they have their own companion in a puka to help them feel emotions and relive memories. Elsie's time loops compounded the problem. Her head locked away in order of magnitude more memories than any living human. And each plunge backward through causality blurred those details. Like jolting from a night terror, only the final moment stood out in sharp relief each time she restarted. Untangling the mess of cause and effect, sorting where she went right and what needed to change. It ate away at her precious few decades before everything collapsed and she would begin the process anew. Any tool that let her draw memories from that lost place, even at random, was a tool worth mastering. You were trained for this kind of work, weren't you? Some kind of... She struggled for a clever analogy. Field therapist? Trained you to soothe, maybe work with exposure therapy. Elsie realizes her new pet, this puka, can help her. In her time loop she's been stuck in, she forgets so many memories. There's too much to store inside her head and try to sift through. Puka can help her find those lost memories and try to avert that dark future where the darkness wins. In our next entry, Elsie finds Nightmare Anna on Europa and learns about the Puka's connection to the darkness. The European Pyramid shapes into her heart the same way Puka could, but the molds it casts were deeper and more urgent. The worst parts of her soul rushed to fill the hollow. Still not tired of this, Elizabeth? Red mists congealed into Anna's form. The wound in her ethereal chest dripped and smoldered. You're not real. All that mattered was the crux. Elsie's visions had revealed the how. All she needed now was enough substance in her present time to flesh out the buried muscle memory. I'm more real than the carbon copy sister you'll think you'll save this time. The nightmare's wound snaked up to manifest a fractured skull. How many dead Annas am I made from? 10? 12? Are we counting them all or just the ones you killed personally? Breaking the nightmare's bond was easier than it should have been. The pyramid's gift for constructing this revenant was a grand imitation of the puka's gift. Elsie felt like any link to her sister, even her own self-loathing wearing an Anastasia mask, should have been harder to unravel. The nightmare dissolved back into warm mist. She took a moment to feel Puka shiver beneath her cloak, appreciating the tactile feeling. It's okay, she comforted. The pyramid slid doors and realigned hallways, trying to keep her from its beating heart. It knew she was there too early this time. She'd walk these halls time and time again to pull stasis from the crux like an Excalibur of personal hell. But always, someone else found it first. Always, they taught her the secret she already knew. Always, they fell to the seductive whispers of the other side, and she stood as the lone soul uncorrupted by the exposure. Or at least, she was the only one who recalled feeling guilt for allowing it. Puka led the way. It could sniff out these stagnant pools of darkness as easy as it could root out Elsie's buried emotions. Trauma smelled the same whether it was in the heart or hanging in the air, Elsie supposed. Dream logic and half-forgotten memories made for a passable map in Elsie's mind. And despite the structure's efforts, she found her way to the pyramid's heart in the empty plinth where the crux should have stood. Finally ahead of the game and still too late. So first up, we learn that other pyramids can create nightmares, not just the one found on Luna. Elsie experiences one of Anna here, and it taunts her about the Annas she's killed in those dark futures. She then finds her way inside the pyramid where she's searching for the crux to give her the power of stasis and darkness. In previous time loops, someone always got there first and then eventually taught Elsie how to use the power, like Marasov or Eris or somebody else. But Puka was the difference this time, eventually allowing her to go in there and find the crux and be the first one to use stasis. And think about this, because she found it first this time, it set up those events of Beyond Light. She teaches it to our guardian instead of someone else teaching her. And maybe some of the promotional material that first showed the Puka was hinting at this. 
This guiding path that led Elsie to find stasis and how she would race to the pyramid before others like Eris and Drifter to find the power of stasis first. Or this just could have been them beating like they did in the campaign, who knows. So that ability is also interesting. Puka led the way it could sniff out stagnant pools of darkness as easily as it could out Elsie's buried emotions. In the Hidden Dossier book, it says, Darkness remembers, light forgets. It is about memory, memory and forgiveness. So Puka has multiple abilities, sniffing out pools of darkness and a strong psychic ability, reading and bringing back users' memories. Cloud Striders and Darkness technology is appearing to be more connected as we get closer to the expansion, and let me know your own theories in the comments below. And lastly, we have more information on what Stasis is in terms of darkness power. Stasis wasn't the sum total of darkness any more than Ark was light. It was an aspect, a shape, and a tool. Every sword was made from iron, but not all iron was swords. Stasis was a tool forged by control and focus, and to her shame, she couldn't imagine what else could spring forth if another force in the cosmos drove her forward like the singular need for control. What other abilities, what shapes and tools could be forged by deference or compassion? What could she have done, she realized in dawning horror, if she loved and relied on Anna beyond the way she needed to control Anna? Dread crawled up her spine, but she knew what she needed allies beyond her control. Allies who were versed in darkness as well as light, who could take her secrets of stasis to the light bearers at large. Teach a hundred or thousand souls to forge iron into a sword, and just maybe one will figure out how to make a plowshare too. She never tried it before, it was something new. And perhaps Anna needed to know there was a place for her saved on Elsie's ship. So there we learn the backstory behind Stasis in terms of the darkness, forged from control and focus. Also, it explains those events of Beyond Light. Elsie realizing she needed allies beyond her control. Allies like our Guardian who can wield Stasis and share it with other light bearers, so we can wield both of these sides and fight it together. But Guardians, that's all we got for today's video, concluding our stories here on the Lightfall Collector's Edition. If you'd like to see some other Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.